Hey there, Dango Stu here. Today's video is about putting a Bimini cover on the green machine and is proudly sponsored by MarineEngine.com. Before we get going, I've got another viewer t-shirt photo. This one is Seth Hoffman from Warren in Pennsylvania. You probably noticed the name from the comments. He's been a viewer for a long time. So thanks for sending a photo in, Seth. So here's a diagram I've drawn up. The plan is to put the Bimini on the boat. First up, I'll just give you a quick look in the box and we'll see what comes in the kit. It's pretty much poles, some fasteners, the hardware, some of the brackets to go with it, and the cover itself. And fortunately, a set of destructions. The process seems to start with just laying the actual cover out first and just putting these crossbars in it. So we'll find a bit of clean space and we'll do that. This being my workshop, I just remembered there isn't any clean space, but there is some space. So we'll lay it out and start putting these cross members in. The crossbars seem to just have a slight curve to them, four of those. There are different versions of these Biminis. They're available pretty much anywhere. If you jump on the marineengine.com site, they sell quite a range of Biminis as well. So I'll slide these in, then we'll start putting the frame together. This particular model is the four bow Bimini, so I'll just quickly show you a photo and get an idea of how it's sort of supposed to go together. So this is it here, and you can see that it's got a long section that then joins to another long section, and then a couple of short ones that come up. Each side seems to come bagged separately, so I'll pop this open and then I'll see if I can kind of assemble it on the ground. Because the two longer sections don't sort of go straight to the hull, one goes to the hull and one goes into it, it's pretty obvious that this one goes in this one because it's just the way the fitting is. So this is the one that's going to go on the deck, this one is going to go into here. I'm not going to make this connection first though, I'm going to put the other ends into the crossbars first. That way it sort of avoids the risk of having them, you know, facing opposite directions or whatever. So I'll get all the orientation right, and then we'll hook it up together. The photo of the Bimini doesn't show, or doesn't label front and back, but the cover itself is labeled with a front. Looking at this picture here, I'm imagining this is the front, because if you undid these stays, it would allow it to fold backwards this way. So I think that's what we want. So I'm gonna rig it up so that the arm here that connects to the other arm is at the front, and obviously the other one at the back. So the one with the extra fitting, I'm calling the back. The one without it, I'm calling the front. These front sleeves are much longer than the crossbars too, whereas the middle two are shorter. So we might have to sort of fish it out, connect it, and possibly even do the other one blind inside the socket. It's probably obvious when you see it, but all these have just a small hole and then these sections just have a little section that pushes in. So they just simply push this in till it clicks in. Nice and easy. All right, we've already got a little bit of a snag. Maybe not a huge problem. I always do these videos on things I've never done before, so bear with me. So according to this photo, the design is long poles to the outside edge, smaller ones coming in, long to the outside, smaller one coming in. With that pair of poles I took out, it doesn't look like they can both go on the right side and connect. So I'll show you why. So here we've got the long pole coming down, going in, fine. This little bracket pointing out, which makes sense because it's a stay that goes forward. This is the end here though, that I want to connect to the other long pole. This is the one that was in the same packet. If I put this on the same side as that one, then this little bracket here is pointing away from that. It's on the wrong side. So it looks as though maybe they're just paired up wrong. This is actually what will ultimately be a starboard side one, because it's upside down, and that'll be a port side one. So I'm gonna open the other packet and see if I can get them to match up. So let's just open the other packet and see if they're also a mismatched pair. So it looks like this one from that kit does match the other side. So I'll pop this one in and I'll show you how they fit together. You can pull the actual Bimini cover back quite easily. We 
stick it on and pull it over. This looks right for the other side too. So it looks like the packets were set up with front right, rear left in one packet, and then front left, rear right in one packet. Because it's going to take quite a few hands to get this thing in position, <laughs> I've got these guys helping, <laughs> and they're mostly distracting. So. <laughs> so we'll go up and look what's in the box, and then we'll figure out how we can sort of get this together and figure out where we're going to put it on the boat. I've had a look through the packet and separated all the various bits of hardware. So what we need to do now is just connect the two frames we made to each other. So we'll grab these and we'll put those together. These sections go together with one of these black knobs and then just a normal nylock. So do the same thing on the other side and then I'm um, going to get a few people to give me a hand and we'll sort of try and find a position for it. People, what are we talking about? So our plan now is just to try and position it fore and aft, mark a spot before we drill anything, just to make sure you can still get in and out of the boat. Oh, feels like being in a lounge room. <laughs> so this is heaps of room, that's really easy. No, still. is that as far forward as you want it, Stuart? I know you wanted it sort of covering the helm position. Well, that's what I'm thinking, because if, if rain comes in at this angle, mm. as you're moving forward, mm. but what I'm thinking is if it came further forward, mm. then instead of having this almost uselessly small gap here, you might actually be able to just still get out here. So is it going to give more drag? Well, well Arm's also is. saying we should try and angle it down slightly. Don't yeah. have it, don't have it tilted so it catches the wind. Yeah. But I reckon there you could actually get out. That's more than enough space to climb out through that. So I think further forward the better, almost. Or going through the bow now. That's. I reckon that's all right. Still, I mean, it's not as quite as easy, but. I think it's a fair compromise. Accessible. Yeah, it's only a... Well, that means your your forward stays are going to go down at an angle onto the bow. Mm. Onto the bow, which is not is the that, end of the earth. Is that an issue? Go from a distance, Jude. I reckon that's the spot. I reckon you're right, Dave. I reckon about level with there. Back, back of the cushion. Yep. And you can definitely get out through here. That's actually quite a big gap. In case you have to eject. Eject, yes. <laughs> All right, so I say we attach that bit first. You have it on the top. And then we put those on and then pick an angle. If we measure back from where this weld is here. Yeah. Is that going to be the same on both sides? Oh, it's near enough. Okay. Good enough for this kind of high-tech NASA stuff. It's uh, pulls to the right anyway. Pulls exactly. <laughs> Ever since the accident. <laughs> Stuart. Oh, All right. Let's do it. Thank you, gentlemen. These are the plastic bits we now need to attach to the gunnel in the position we just determined. We're going to drill them on. It comes with some stainless screws. I'm not a huge fan of screws. I'd probably rather rivet it, but it does mean that I can kind of easily move it should it be wrong. So I'll use the supplied screws to start with anyway. So this fitting is going on the gunnel here, but we're going to have it so the this fasteners, the little knob here is going to be on the inside rather than the outside because otherwise as you sort of ran along a pile or something it will break off pretty easily so we'll have it on the inside there. I'm going to measure 300 mil from this upright and just mark that on the gunnel and then I think I'll make that 300 millimeter mark the mark of the aft hole and then just mark the front one. So we'll do that both sides, drill it and then screw these on and then I'll actually attach the bimini to these so we can start playing with the forward and aft stays. Got these holes drilled out now. This drill bit obviously is just a bit smaller than the, the screw size so that the thread's got some metal left to bite into. Yeah. So we're going to put the backstays on the actual bimini now and then we'll slot it in place and then play with the position of those backstays until we get the angle we want. The backstays go on with just uh, bolts and nylock so we'll whack those on and then get it back on the boat. The nylock inside these is captivated so you don't need a span or anything, just a screwdriver. They actually supply a screwdriver with the kit which is nice. Alright, so Paul and Dave are going to lift it back on now and we'll fasten it in. Okay. 
our plan is to put these little brackets on the back ones just so they're off the deck the right height. And then we're going to measure from the gunnel up to these brackets to get a sense of how level it is. It's currently 8.35 at the front and 8.60 at the back, which is kind of good because it gives us that downward tilt we were looking for. I might experiment with moving the backstays back a little bit just to get more of an angle on them. We've had a little play with the angle of this one and having it dead straight down gives us the most forward tilt. And the point was also made that when the boat's running along, the whole boat will tilt up a bit too. So I think the more the merrier. It's movable down the track. I somehow you sort of get the intuitive sense that pulling it backwards a little bit is going to make it a bit stronger. But I think as long as this forms a triangle here, it should be good. I don't want it to be a little bit off vertical, so I'm going to use a square just to make it square to the gunnel. We'll run with that for a while. If it needs it, we can tweak it later. Because I can't get the square hard against the pole, I'm just moving it until I can see it's parallel. So I'll just mark these drill holes and then we'll get these back ones buttoned down. So Paul's just going to fasten down the port side and then we'll put those forward stays on. The straps come with little saddles for attaching them to the deck as well as obviously some bolts to put them onto the bimini frame. But I'll put them on the frame first, we'll just pull them taut and see if we can find a convenient place to put them on the deck. It's not going to either get knocked off on wharves or get in the way when I'm getting in and out of the boat. These are the straps here, they're the front stays. I think this loop side goes through the frame itself and this eye is designed to hook onto that saddle so that you can easily disconnect it and pull it back up. Here you can see I've just folded it in half to fit it in that cap and then put the bolt and the nylock through. We were just having a bit of a chat about where to put the saddles for these four stays. What we're really looking for is somewhere that doesn't block the nav lights, you won't trip over them, they aren't in the way of the ropes they used for tying up or that kind of thing. So we're thinking of just going inside these uh, frame for the windscreen. We're pretty much done now. It actually was a pretty quick job. I was expecting it to take a bit longer, so they're not too hard to install. What I'll do now is we'll just go and launch this boat, because we get home tonight anyway, and give you a sort of better look once it's off the trailer. One other thing Paul just pointed out though is that this particular fastener here, the knob's on the outside, not the inside, and we can't do anything about that without taking this rivet out, drilling this rivet, and then swapping it right round. So I don't really want to be sort of having the gunnel run along a pole, grab that and just shear it off. So that's definitely something I might look at doing pretty soon. Before we get going to tow the boat, I'm just going to collapse the canopy so that it's not sort of fluttering along with the wind speed as we're driving. Morning. It's uh, pretty cold this morning, but uh, got to head across the water anyway. So I thought I'd quickly show you what it looks like on the water. So this is the finished product now. I think it came out alright. It is still very easy to fit through this gap and get into the boat. You sort of got the cover up ahead of you there, and still, you know, no effect on visibility. And then this gap here, when I get out over the bow which is why this railing's cut, still has quite a lot of space to get in there. It's not a particular squeeze or anything. And then out the back, it's pretty open. So if you come out the back, it's good here too, because if you're fishing, you've got quite an area here where you can sort of cast or whatever without the bimini over the top of you directly. So I think that's gonna work out all right too. I'm not sure if I'll leave the bimini up all the time. It's kind of convenient to have it there, but then I think it'll last longer if it's collapsed most of the time. And really, I only really want it for rainy days. That's really what it's for. So maybe also really sunny days if you're fishing or whatever, but most of the time I think I will keep it collapsed because if a storm comes up during the night, I don't really want the extra windage and that kind of thing. So, and it, to be honest with you, it's actually really quick. You know, to zip the cover off particularly is really quick and it's only two clips to sort of put those two four stays back on. So I think that's how I'll run with it generally, but it's not in the way when it's up anyway. So we'll see, I'll probably get lazy and just leave it up, but time will tell. Another quick tip I'll share with you before we go is something a viewer commented in a video of mine saying, if I put a twist in the strap that I hold a boat down in a trailer, it'll stop it sort of vibrating. So as I go along, I'll show you this strap here is pretty straight. Whereas this one, 
has a twist in it. This one doesn't vibrate much, but this one sort of flaps around a lot. So it sort of goes to prove that theory. See that one gets a vibration up. This one's staying quite still. So if you see that problem with straps, just unhook it, put one twist in it, put it back on, it should be heaps better. So that's the same one with a single twist in it now, and it's stopped completely. Anyway, uh, look, I hope this video helps you if you're looking at adding a bimini to your boat. I'm not sure if I mentioned at the start, but I measured the width of the boat. That was kind of the predominant measurement that you order from. So this boat's 1.8 meters wide, and this bimini was advertised in the 1.7 to 1.9 range, so it was smack in the middle, so it was a perfect fit for this boat. But there are smaller, and I think possibly even wider ones. So mainly, because the length's not as critical, mainly just make sure you measure the beam of the boat and get one that suits your boat's width. All right, we'll take care, and I'll catch you next week. See ya.